Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the NHL slate for this evening. It's a very, very big, healthy slate. So we're going to go through the entire process of how we come from you know, the beginning to the end as far as building lineups. And the process is not very long, uh, especially when you're not involved with making the actual projections like, like uh, some people are. Uh, we're, we're going to start with the presumption that we have a good set of projections. Uh, we're using the true DFS ones. That's when I kind of go through the industry and I, I look at the models that usually work and, and tweak a little bit and, and all of this and come up with this uh, main sheet, which is essentially the projection sheet. And um, sorry, the projection sheet. And this rates all of the players by Fantasy points, points per dollar, sheets value score, which is kind of my take on value. I don't want to get too into it, but it takes into account both uh, fantasy points and points per dollar. Then the uh, ownership projection and the even strength line, power play line. And this is kind of the raw, not the raw data. This is not the raw data. This is the result of the raw data. The raw data leads to the making of these projections. Um, and this is what we're starting with when we do lineup construction. So the first thing that we, I would like to do is first just take a look at the slate. Uh, it's a big slate. We already, by the way, have somebody that's out. Uh, Dakota Josh was out of our projections, so we'll make a note of that. What I'd like to do first is just kind of scroll through the Saberson uh, game uh, list here to see which team has high implied goal lines. Um, and, and I know that that all gets factored into projections already. And I know that all you have to do is go to the sheet and just start with there. But I do like to see what teams I would expect to project well. And I also like to see how the slate lays out as far as timing and late swap goes. So the first thing I'll look at is let's, let's see if there's anybody over four here. Yeah, so Ottawa, they have an implied total of over four. Rangers are approaching for um, Edmonton approaching for and Vancouver approaching for. So these are the teams that you would expect to have good, at least raw point projections because yes, goals do correlate rather nicely with, with a lot of fantasy. Points. Um, the other thing I want to notice again is the, is the, the layout so seven o'clock seven o'clock seven o'clock eight o'clock eight o'clock there is one one hour gap between the commencement of the nine o'clock game and the commencement of the late 10 o'clock game which you'll recall does have a team that might be viable so you are going to probably want a late swap probably twice once just before the 8 p.m start and then I mean, if you want to get really technical, you're supposed to do it before each break point, 8.30, then the 9, and then the 10. So if you could be around your computer, that is the best thing to do. You always should be late swapping at every possible opportunity, especially when you have Saberson to use. Um, so let's then go to our sheets here and see what we would expect. You know, we're looking here at our sheets and we're looking to see what teams players are showing up near the top of this. And, and, and we're looking at um, boy, Colorado. They're really expensive. Nashville, Nashville. It, it really doesn't look like a great hand build type of slate. And, and what do I mean by that? A, a good hand building slate is one where the value and, and the plays just appear very obvious from looking at the sheet here. Like you, you, you would see like four guys from the same team up in the top 10 or something like that. So unfortunately, this is a slate we're probably going to have to rely on Saberson to build for us. Um, let me just see. Is there anything I could do hand building wise? I don't, I don't really see it. Maybe the Rangers? No, but even that, you have a $9,100 guy. So it's a tough, tough hand built slate. So let's just go straight to Saberson. Let's uh, 
upload the projections. They were already uploaded, but we're gonna do it again. This way we will actually take out this, uh, exclude Dakota Joshua. And we'll build, we're gonna play 40 lineups and we'll set it back to Mini Leaks one. And we're gonna start by building, I guess 1500, plenty. And we'll use the, we'll use the 150 max default settings this time. Sometimes it's just default to the 20 max, but this time we'll use the 150. And we'll just build our lineups. Now, again, it's important to know what's going on here. Why are we building 2,000 lineups if we're only going to play 40? Because we need a, a pool of lineups to choose from when we start filtering. You know, we're not necessarily going to play the top 40 projected lineups. So uh, once we start making rules and start making concessions and start boosting players, if we feel like doing that or start eliminating certain stack sizes and things like that, you need to be able to have those lineups ready to go. And that's, that's one of the major benefits of the Saber Sim Optimizer is that when you make a, a change after your initial build, it automatically like redoes your lineups for you. You don't have to rebuild. You don't have to do anything because it already built more than you would probably need. So that when you did make changes, it has those kind of reserves like ready to display as your top lineups. So we're building 1500. So what we're doing is they're, they're being, there are 1500 lineups here. And what they're showing is the top 40 rated by, that's the important point, by Sabre score. And if you wanna dive into what this means, the formula for Sabre score for this particular build is 0.2 times the sum of my projections plus 0.8 times the 95th percentile of lineups, which is pretty, pretty aggressive, plus, or excuse me, minus 0.5 times the average adjusted ownership. So it is definitely making an accommodation for lower owned plays. It's definitely making an accommodation for the higher ceiling type outcomes. And it's a good way to start. What I like to do first is make sure that, um, especially on a big slate, I don't have exposure to stacked, uh, stacks that I don't want. In other words, not what teams, but what types. And I like to limit my exposure to either five twos, sixes, or five or four threes. So just to, in case, we're just gonna X out anything that would be anything but those. Okay. We haven't even looked at what the what the lineups are, but yeah, may as well. So at this point, we have a distribution of 67% Tampa, 30% Chicago, 27% Colorado, pretty heavy duty uh, Tampa exposure. And you could drill down if you want to where that comes from. So you actually have a good amount of six-man onslaughts. 35% of these lineups are Tampa six-man onslaughts. 20% are five-mans for Tampa. 12% are four-mans for Tampa, etc. So needless to say, this is a very Tampa-heavy lineup uh, construction. Now, at this point, it could stop. You know, you, you could put these lineups in. And I think that certainly makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you use, you know, you're using SaberSim, which is a really good tool, it's created high upside lineups using uh, game simulations to come up with project, you know, with projections. Although once again, we have replaced their projections with ours. We're using the correct, you know, stacks that we want, so we could go ahead and do this. We could put put these lineups in. Um, but depending on how confident you are, there are a couple of other things you could do. And then we're getting to contest sims. Right now, we're, we're only requiring that each lineup be one player different from one another. So it's possible that you, you could have lineups, let's say they're 
nine people in the lineup, that eight skaters are all the same and you just have one different goalie, for example. And if that's the case, it really is putting a lot of pressure on, on you being right. So in the, especially in the big GPPs, what's a good idea is to, is to um, expand your min uniques. And there's a question of how, how much to expand it. And Jordan from Saberson has given us a good idea. Now, again, this, I can't, you know, back test this or whatever for anything, but what you want to do is go down to a min unique setting where you cannot get the lineups you want anymore. As so like right now we can actually get min uniques eight. Actually, no, we can get min unique set. So this is the last amount of min uniques you can get to without you know saber some yelling at you. So what Jordan recommends is that you go one more or one less. So you go to min unique six. And what this does, it gives you more exposure. You know, it, it, it it's it as you see, you know, you're not getting 70%. Tampa, as a matter of fact, you're not even getting as many as much Tampa as the rest. Um, and again, with all things in life, if you if you want a little more diversification, you pay for that with upside. So not with upside, but basically with projection integrity. Like you're not you're no longer getting the top forty rated by Saber Score. You're getting the top forty with the with the requirement that they have at least six different players in each lineup. So you're you're really sacrificing a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of uh, your top lineups in the name of diversification. So this becomes a question that you have to answer for yourself. You know, like if you if you're uber confident, you know, with your with your projections and your ownership, whatever, screw it. Don't go min unique six. Don't go min unique one and just 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 let's go. Right. Uh, but for the purposes of this, we're going to leave it at min unique six. So again, so at this point, you can go ahead and upload your lineups, and and you can you can be good to go. However, let's 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 examine what happens when you apply the contest settings. Um, now, what does that mean? Well, again, what we're what we're doing with contest settings is we are comparing our lineups, and again, remember not just the forty, but all fifteen hundred that we created against. What Saberson Fields feels the field is going to play. The idea being that if everybody's going to be playing the same types of lineups we're playing, we're probably better off getting a little bit different in the name of, of taking down the big prize, in the name of getting leverage. So the real question, this is the $60 million question, is, is what is – 60 million, maybe more than that, $600 million question, is, is what, what field of lineups do we want to compare our lineups to? Like, like, how do you want to sim this contest? You have to establish some field of lineups to at least start with. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. Okay, for first, like, first of all, you, you've said a couple of things that are automatic. Like, one, let's use the kick save, for example, it does have the contest size, the percent to first, and the percent entries paid. Okay, that that that's default. The question of what field lineups can be used. So, saber sim lineups, saber sim ownership, basically compares your lineups to the lineups that saber sim fields are going to be owned the most. You know, based on the ownership of the, you know, based on the ownership that SaberSim is projecting. Now, what that's doing, it's no longer applying your ownership. Okay, like we've done our custom ownership projections, and now if we go to the contest sims, for the purposes of establishing a field, we're now presuming that SaberSim's ownerships are correct. And that's interesting, right? Um, that's interesting. 
you can certainly do that. And I'll show you how to do that. It, it's sitting here right here. So Sabre some ownership. We ran the cut. Do we run it yet? Yes. Yeah, so let's uh let's go back to Min Unique's one. We'll run the contest sim. And then we will see. We'll see what we get. All right, so we now sort by, for this kick save, risk-adjusted ROI. And now we'd be getting about 37% Ottawa, 20% Chicago, 20% Dallas, et cetera, et cetera. And then you would have to ne then make the same uh, decisions about how many men you need and things like that. We'd have to double check stack exposure, make sure that's good. I think it's going to save those requirements though. So you would then do the same thing. You go to Min Uniques, what was it, six? Is that usually the, the magic number here? And then you get like even more kind of spread out. You know, so again, depends on how aggressive you'd want to be. You know, somewhere between one and six. Min Uniques is what probably what you want to do. And now, as you'll see, you're getting like Ottawa, Dallas, Chicago, and I'm right. So let's do something different. Instead of comparing the uh, our lineups to the Sabre Sim Ownership field lineups, let's compare it to our own build. Now, you think about this for a second before we do that. What is build one? Build one are those entire uh, 1,500 lineup set, okay? Now, ideally, what you wanna, you're going to want to do is put as many uh, – lineups as is in that contest so 4705 we would ideally want to make it 4705 as far as your field of lineups and the idea is that the total distribution of lineups based on your projection that you put in and your ownership that you put in or whatever is going to be the field that you compare yourself to so you might be thinking well, why do I, why do i want to compare myself to my own lineups. It's not that you compare yourself to your own 40. You're comp you want the top 40 that perform well against your entire pool of 1,500. And that's just a little bit different. So let's see what that does. We're going to change this to build one for what, uh, what the field's lineups is going to look like. Put it back to Minion Meeks 1, and we'll run the contest sim again now you see already like what's been going on here right so you already um you already had one build where it was like almost all tampa Then you had another with very, very little Tampa. Anyway. So let's, uh, ooh, when you do this, when you compare it to your own field, you're getting 27% Chicago, 22% Calgary. Okay. Um, and then you would make the same decisions. You go to Min Uniques, maybe six. And that's the real difference is you're getting more Calgary in this build, but you're still getting Ottawa and everything, Vancouver and everything. So unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, I don't have the answer as far as which lineup construction you're gonna want. And, and the thing is, is with hockey, Unlike a lot of sports, there's such a difference in, in your exposure based on what settings you use. Um, but again, I guess some guidelines is that if you do feel very confident, first of all, in your in your projections, in your ownership projections or whatever, then I would, first of all, leave Min Uniques at Min Uniques 1 or Min Uniques 2, two at the most. And the other thing is that 
if you're really confident in your projections, then you should probably use that build one thing as your as your sentence. You know, you, if you're confident that your field is going to be better than the Saber Sim ownership, then do that. Otherwise, do the Saber Sim ownership. Uh, for now, we are going to, because I do feel sort of confident in today's projections, and just for now, we'll save this. Uh, the other one is we will use, uh, we're in these other contests, so let's make sure to those in. Well, unfortunately, for Thursday Night Ice, 555 or whatever, we use Saber Sim ownership for. It's actually... I don't know what's better or worse. Let's for now, let's let's keep it that way. We'll use the Saber Sim ownership fields for Thursday Night Ice. We'll also use that for the blue line. And then we'll just keep thinking about it. You know, we'll keep thinking about what's best. And again, this is all after you've done all your fundamental work. You know, this is this is this is line of construction. This is not analysis. This is line of construction after you've already done all your analysis. So, listen. Nobody said it would be easy, but this is uh, this is the process I use. And, uh, hopefully, you guys learned something. That'll do it. Good luck.